Welcome back to the channel. Now, Matthew, Mark, and Luke describe the transfiguration event when Jesus went up a mountain with Peter, James, and John, where Jesus talked with Moses and Elijah and was transfigured into his glorious form. Tradition, which I put in quotes, because that's not always the best indicator in determining historical facts, says that the transfiguration took place on Mount Tabor. I will be using scripture and a little orology to make the case for Mount Hermon. Approximately 200 years after Christ, it was first mentioned by Egyptian-born Christian scholar and theologian Origen that Mount Tabor was the place that transfiguration happened. Around 100 years later, the Bishop of Jerusalem, Cyril, stated that he preferred Tabor over the much taller Mount Hermon in northern Israel as the location of this event. So since the 3rd and 4th centuries, it has been assumed that Tabor is the Mount of Transfiguration. Over the years, multiple churches have been built on top of Tabor, and even today there is a Franciscan church and a Greek Orthodox church at the top. Let's jump into the scriptures as I begin to lay out my three reasons that Mount Hermon is the most likely candidate for the Transfiguration event to have taken place. We find the Transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17, Mark chapter 9, and Luke chapter 9. Point number one, Caesarea Philippi. According to Matthew and Mark's accounts, Jesus and his disciples were in Caesarea Philippi in the prior chapter before the transfiguration event took place. Caesarea Philippi sits at the base of Mount Hermon. Now Luke doesn't mention Caesarea Philippi or any place preceding the transfiguration moment, but does describe the same conversations Jesus had with Peter and the other disciples that Matthew and Mark also include. Click the link above for my review of Caesarea Philippi where I touch on these conversations. Matthew chapter 17 verse 1. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. Mark chapter 9 verse 2. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. Luke's version is slightly different using after eight days instead of six and does not use the word high to describe the mountain, just that it was a mountain. To be fair to the Mount Tabor supporters, I will concede that geographically it would take less than 24 hours to walk from Caesarea Philippi to Mount Tabor. So the length of time that passed, whether it be six or eight days, would be more than enough time for them to arrive at Mount Tabor. But what I want to focus on is the adjective Matthew and Mark use in describing the mountain. Point number two, it was a high mountain. In Matthew and Mark, the Greek word used for high is hupselos, meaning high or lofty. It is used a total of five times in the New Testament. The first time we see hupselos is in Matthew chapter 4, verse 8, during the third temptation of Christ when the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain. The second and third times it's used are in Matthew 17, 1 and Mark 9, 2, which we've already read. The final two times Hupselos is used in the New Testament is Revelation chapter 21, verse 10, which says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. And lastly, in Revelation 21, 12, which was describing the wall of New Jerusalem, it says, it had a great high wall. So how tall is this great high wall? Well, John actually tells us. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 16, he measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and high as it is long. 12,000 stadia is equal to 1,380 miles, which is equal to over 7.2 million feet. This city will be ginormous. So how tall is Mount Tabor and the other mountains in the northern half of Israel? Well, Mount Hermon is the tallest at 9,232 feet. Mount Tabor is only 1,886 feet. In the upper Galilee region is Mount Marin at 3,963 feet. On the east side of the Jezreel Valley is Mount Gilboa, whose highest peak comes in at 2,132 feet. I also added the hill of Moray, which is about 10 miles south of Mount Tabor, reaching 1,690 feet. Lastly, I included Megiddo on this map to give you a point of reference when I show you this photo that I took of Tabor and Moray when standing at the ancient ruins of Tel Megiddo. And this brings me to my last point. 
Number three, the transfiguration was done in private. How do we know this? Matthew 17, 9, Mark 9, 9, and Luke 9, 36, they were all instructed to keep what they saw to themselves. And in Matthew 17, 14, Mark 9, 14, and Luke 9, 37, we see that when they came down from the mountain, they were met by the other disciples and a large crowd as a father was needing Jesus to heal his demon-possessed child. So if the transfiguration took place on Hermon with a large crowd at the base of the mountain, the 9,232 feet would provide much better seclusion for this miraculous moment to take place than the 1,886 feet of Mount Tabor. Now you may want to point out that during the transfiguration event, a thick cloud covered them, and therefore they would have been secluded regardless of how high up they were. However, all three Gospels describe the brightness of Jesus when he transfigured. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 2, There he was transfigured before them, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Luke 9.29 describes Jesus' clothes as bright as a flash of lightning. Then Moses and Elijah appeared in Matthew chapter 17, verse 3. Verse 4, Peter wanted to build three shelters for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. And then in verse 5, the cloud appeared and covered them. And that's when God declared his love for his son. So the cloud did not come until after Jesus was brightly transfigured and after Moses and Elijah appeared. So these are the reasons why I believe Mount Tabor was not the best place for the transfiguration to have occurred. I believe the facts I have presented support Mount Hermon being the most likely location of this miraculous moment. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know what you think in the comments below. In closing, there is nothing spiritually enlightening to take from this video. This was simply an analytical exercise on how my brain works when I look at the facts and look at the scriptures regarding the transfiguration. It doesn't really matter where the transfiguration took place. If you believe the Bible to be the true word of God, knowing that it took place is all that really matters. If you enjoyed this video, please crush that like button. But until next time, thank you for watching and God bless.